Hi everyone, my name is Christian Gonzalez, and I'm going to talk to you guys about Event Horizon, which is the product that uh, me and my co-founders are working on right now. So right now it's very popular to tra chase the trends of AI or DPIN or you know, infrastructure, it always is, and they're important things, so we support that. But we strongly believe that governance is completely underlooked right now. So a couple weeks ago, Uniswap, I don't know if you guys saw, like two weeks ago, the token ripped like 70% a day. And if you guys looked into that, the reason for that is they're turning on revenue share, finally. In a little bit of a convoluted way, but they're doing it. Shapeshift is doing the same thing 50% a day. Another fun fact about governance is there's actually $50 billion worth of assets sitting in Dow Treasuries. But no one's found a way of unifying that long tail distribution of Dow tokens to actually vote to move these in a particular way. So there's a lot of money sitting on the table here. And so we've been positioning ourselves in the last 12 months to capitalize on this. So as it stands today, Event Horizon is the 10th largest voter in Uniswap, the 8th largest in Aave, 7 in Compound, and 5 in Shapeshift. Now, the way that we structure is we're essentially grabbing governance authority across various DAOs, wrapping it behind one token. So with one token, you'll be able to vote on all the major DAOs in the space. We're talking Arbitrum, Optimism, Uniswap, you name it. But not only can you vote on all of these DAOs with one token, but your voting authority is multiplied by 10,000 X. And I'll get into how we do that in a second. The beauty of the structure of our product is we're not paying people to vote. We're not taking grant money, shoveling it over there, which is not sustainable. We're not inflating a token. We're not doing anything like that. We operate a very novel game theory that lets, lets people get this vote multiple. And what that means is it self-selects for the right kind of people. The people who show up to vote through Event Horizon as a meta governance layer are people who actually give a damn about governance. And so we've seen our participation rate is sitting at 30%. Typical DAOs are just under 1%. So how are we doing, it? How are we doing this? So the structure is we have voters and we have interested voters. We have high participation. DAOs, they don't have participation at all. No one's showing up to vote. So what we do is we go, hey, we can take our voters, we can bring them to you, but in exchange, we're not asking for a grant, we don't want your money, delegate to us. And so right now we're working with various DAOs, working with Arbitrum, SushiSwap, and Gitcoin. So on the, on the Arbitrum front, we have about $125 million of support from various delegates to grant, uh, excuse me, to delegate to Event Horizon $10 million of Arbitrum. We have the support of a couple of the Uniswap founders. Actually, two days ago, the CEO just tweeted us out, which is super cool. Uh, the largest Ave voter is using our product right now. And then we also have the support of the Gitcoin founders. They want to make us about a top five delegate. Sushi, we're working on the specifics, but it's going to involve uh, bonding. It was also super cool to see we were at the Arbitrum Governance Hackathon in East Denver, and all the delegates actually knew about us, which was super cool because you know, we have like 300 Twitter followers, so that was pretty gratifying. So how does it work? So you can go to our website right now, eventhorizon.vote, and you can mint a free soulbound NFT. So you just pay the cost of gas and you get this NFT. What you can do with that NFT is, well, whenever Arbitrum or Optimism or Uniswap or any of these DAOs has a proposal, what we do is we copy them over all on the front end, you can select it, it populates this field up here, you can read the proposal, and then you can vote with your voter pass. What happens is, however the Event Horizon community votes, the entire voter pool votes that way. So what that means is if even one person shows up, let's say we have a million dollars of Uniswap, that one person moves a million dollars of Uniswap. What that also means is the second person to show up moves 500,000. Third person, 333. 
So what we've, what we've never seen is one person voting because there's so much incentive for the governance nerds out there that we're bringing out of the woodwork to actually come vote through Event Horizon. And that's how we have such a large participation rate. So what happens is we, we, we pin two problems against each other. On one hand, you have maybe not a lot of people show up to vote. But that's fine because those few people that show up get a huge uh, vote multiple on their voting power relative to the cost of minting this NFT. On the flip side, if a lot of people show up to vote, yeah, the, 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 the multiple gets compressed, but guess what? We just increase participation. So everybody wins in any case. So this meta-governance layer that we're building is novel for a lot of reasons, but one of my favorites is if you talk to any delegates in the space, one of the common problems that they face is there's just way too much out there to read. These proposals, especially if you look at Aave, they're printing like three or four a day sometimes. It's just not tenable. It's unsustainable for the people who actually have the, more or less their job is to be a delegate. But the cool thing about Event Horizon is we're self-selecting, not just for the governance nerds, but on a per-proposal per basis. Let's say Arbitrum's putting out a proposal for gaming. Then you have all the people interested in gaming showing up to vote. The people who most care about that space are showing up and voting. If it's DeFi, then all the DeFi people come out of the woodworks and vote. And so every time, not only is Event Horizon voting with 100% uh, uh, certainty, we're always voting no matter what, but it's voting and empowering specifically those who most care about that proposal. So that's something that doesn't exist in the industry today either. That's where we are today. Going forward, like I said, we are going to have a token. And so the idea is we go DAO to DAO, get, these, uh, get, get the delegation, 10 mil from Arbitrum, 8 million from Optimism, 6 from whoever. A aggregate that all behind the voter pass NFT, and then wrap that in a token. So now this one token lets you vote on all of these different DAOs with that multiplied governance authority. So the average we've found is about one to 3,000 X so far. We've had them go upwards of 20,000 X, actually like two days ago, Uniswap proposal, but uh, we've seen it compressed around that range. And then going, going forward, what we're gonna do is we're implementing bonding. So you have your, you know, a dollar of Uniswap, whatever it might be. You put that into the Event Horizon Treasury. You slowly earn our token over time. And now that one dollar that you gave up that we now own, you can now not only vote on Uniswap with that multiple, but you can also vote on Arbitrum and Optimism and Compound and Maker and all these different DAOs in the space. So the game theory points to everyone participating, whether you want to lobby for votes, put a proposal through, vote yourself, or, or increase your exposure to the governance ecosystem. All roads point to Event Horizon. And that is where we are today and where we're going in the future. These are my lovely co-founders. That's me. And if you guys have any questions, I'd love to chat about it. Thank you. Yeah. Person can make a soulbound token, or yeah. So that was that so that was a consideration for uh, the the Arbitrum uh, proposal we're working on. So what we're doing is we're doing a Gitcoin uh, Gitcoin pass, I believe it's called. And so you have like a proof of humanity type system. You're not scanning your retinas or anything, but there's there's a system that you accumulate points, and it determines more or less if you're a real person. Of course, no system's perfect but it's a, it's a good band-aid for the next few months until token gets out. Anyone else? So I'm just wondering about this like, multiplier thing that you were talking about, the 10,000 multiplier, did you say? Yeah, it can be. So I'm just thinking, like, obviously, we've got this problem that the DAO people are not, not actually voting on things, so it's very congested with moving forward. But also, I'm thinking, mm, maybe there's some alarm bells with that kind of multiplier of back to 10,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe if a group of like 10 people got together that wanted to do something naughty, yep. maybe they could like really change the direction of something in a, in a, in a negative way. So is there any kind of safeguards? Yeah, about absolutely. We spent a lot of time thinking about this. So the, 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 thank you for your question. The, 
The bonding model is really key to aligning incentives. So not only can you bond in, you can burn and get out. So it's sort of like an index with a floor price, not necessarily a ceiling price. So you arbitrage and you know, the, the floor is there. Uh, and and what, that, what that does is essentially your one token is now backed by all these other DAO tokens in the treasury. So now you're voting. Let's say you want to do something nefarious against Uniswap. Okay, well, you have the HVAX token. You're voting. Well, your HVAX token is backed by Uniswap. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. On top of that, we're, we're going to have a lock model. So you're not only shooting yourself in the foot, but you're bleeding out all the time that it takes for your token to get unlocked. So that was a valid, that's a valid consideration, but something we've uh, also put a lot of thought into as well. Cool. Yeah. How do you pick the DAO to be included? How do you pick the DAO to be included? <coughs> so that was a, we had a lot of internal discussion about that. There's some really interesting avenues for maybe we did a lot of data science work initially to find uh, there is a, a metric we'll ca we're calling price to capture, which is basically the minimum amount of, of dollars to flip like the last 10 proposals, more or less, so that you can be like the deciding vote. And then you also have the Dow Treasury. So we found a ratio and we want to optimize for that. And we found a couple standouts that I'm not going to mention, but we found the most important thing for us is to just get the boots off the ground, get this thing in the air, get it running, get it working. And so in order to do that, you want to, in order to have a token that's backed by these tokens, you don't want it backed by, you know, small no-name DAOs. People aren't going to trust that, right? So we're going more the blue, the blue chip uh, avenue. There's also practical considerations because we're doing the delegation route first. Who do we know in the Arbitrum ecosystem, right? So we, we had to meet a lot of the delegates, you know, shake their hands and, and explain the product. And then they, you know, signed up. And so it just happened to be that Arbitrum was one of the first ones we went after. We, had a, a, we knew a bunch of people in, in Uniswap as well, and so that's kind of how it unfolded. But the consideration shifted from high impact to, hey, maybe we shouldn't really have any political opinions here and leave that to the community, kind of be uh, politically agnostic, and then just go after the blue chips to maximize trust. Did you include the maker DAO? Maker is not supported right now. Okay. So right now it's five. It's Arbitrum, Uniswap, Compound, uh, Ave and Shapeshift. And is there one of the hosting DAOs? And then I, I just, that's why I, I was wondering how do you, how do you pick your, the DAO to be included? In the yeah, there's, there's, there's more to it. So the way we got the initial delegation was not through the DAOs. We partner with uh, uh, hedge funds and we do like a yield farming operation for them. It's a DeFi sidearm. I don't want to unpack that too much. It's a lot of information and I want to focus on the governance. But basically, we're doing that service for them. The yield gets swapped into DAO tokens, and they delegate that to us. And so that's been how we got our initial uh, uh, stack of, of DAO tokens. But that's, so that's just whatever yield opportunities were out there was kind of the historical accident there. But going forward for the delegations, it's, you know, who do we, who do we know in the Arbitrum ecosystem? Where are we making more headwinds? And then just, you know, charting a path forward from there. Thank you.